Before we jump into the show, I want to give everyone a heads up that we only have two spots left in the 2018 Sleeper Wire Pro-Am. These last two spots are going to be raffled off. Every multiple of $10 for a donation gets you a raffle ticket. Donate at GoFundMe.com slash RobJR. Take a screenshot of your donation and send it to SleeperWire at gmail.com and include your name, email, and your username for the Sleeper app. I challenge you to a duel. You no more, you. You got a lot of nerve. Soon you will know what it is like to be defeated. Stop defending him, Sean. All right, let's go. Hey, sleepers, welcome to the Sleeper Wire Great Debate Show, where we do a fast debate between two players. I am your host, Professor Chris, on Twitter at Seymour Sleeper Wire, and today I welcome back Prophet Hoos, first time on the show in 2018. Hoos, how's it going, man? Pretty dang good. Happy to be back to the to this stuff. I mean, this much mean football is is pretty much around the corner. I mean, we're talking, we're analyzing player by player, you know, digging into the good stuff to help the good people happy to be on. Yeah, happy to have you back, man. I think you you were the uh, the one who were, was on the most last season, uh, whether it be last off season, we're talking about who to draft or even during the waiver wire great debates in season. Uh, so it's great to have you back on the back on the show. Yeah, man, the stuff is so fun. Happy to just dive right back into it. It's 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 exciting stuff. Before we jump into the show here, guys, uh, please go to iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher or wherever you listen to us, Spotify, and maybe drop us a five-star rating and leave us a nice review. That truly does help out the show. It helps us at Sleeperwire to make a bigger difference as well. What we're going to be doing here with the great debate is having an actual debate-style argument between these two players. We're going to have a couple minutes to argue for our player, 90 seconds for rebuttals, and then we wrap it up with final thoughts. The purpose of this, once again, is not to convince each other that we are right. We're not trying to win the debate. The purpose is to give you guys legitimate arguments for and against these guys so that you can make an educated decision on who to draft. And today, taking it back to wide receivers, we've got Tyreek Hill versus Larry Fitzgerald, two wide receivers being drafted in the third round of PPR leagues at the 13th and 14th overall spots. I've got Tyreek and Hoos has Fitz, and I'm going to go ahead and kick us off here. Tyreek Hill is hands down the most electrifying player in the NFL. Standing at five foot eight and 185 pounds, you wouldn't think that he'd be this, you know, pretty dominant fantasy wide receiver. But here's the thing: Tyreek the Freak is insanely fast. Last season, Hill used his four or 4.29 40 yard dash time to help him turn his 75 catches into 1,183 receiving yards for an average of 78.9 yards per game, which was 6th in the NFL. He had 15.8 yards per reception, which was 10th in the NFL. His 75 catches in 15 games put him at 13th in receptions. He was 7th in receiving yards and tied for 14th in touchdowns with 7. And all this while only receiving 105 targets, which means that he had a 71.4% catch percentage, which was 8th in the NFL. People are acting like taking Tyreek Hill as the 14th overall wide receiver is ridiculous this season, when all of these stats last season were in the top 14. Tyreek Hill is a huge deep threat player. He's very hard to contain. Last season, all seven of his touchdowns came from 30 yards out or more. In fact, five of his seven receiving touchdowns were from more than 50 yards away. That is the kind of player that can win you a week with just one catch. In 15 games last season, keep in mind that he didn't play Week 17, uh, just because the Chiefs were already in the playoffs, he put up double-digit fantasy point points in 11 of those 15, and 9 of those 11 were above 15 fantasy points. He caught 5 or more passes in 10 of those 15 games, which is pretty decent for PPR, and 10 of those games had at least 60 receiving yards, and he really only threw up a dud once, and that was Week 8 against the Broncos. All of these stats added up to the wide receiver eight with Alex Smith as his quarterback, who had a career year in nearly every statistical category. And, you know, Alex Smith is, you know, this recency bias about him being, oh, he's so good. Yeah, he's a top five quarterback. He hasn't been a fantasy stud his whole career. I mean, this is really the first year that he was a fantasy star quarterback, he's really only ever been serviceable. Tyreek Hill played a huge part in Alex Smith's career season, and so did Kareem Hunt. Alex Smith didn't make Tyreek Hill into a great fantasy player. Hill and Hunt made Alex Smith into a great fantasy quarterback. 
The Chiefs brought in Sammy Watkins to play opposite Tyreek Hill, but that doesn't bother me at all. Watkins was great in the red zone last year. In fact, seven of his eight touchdowns came inside the 20. You'll hear people say that Watkins is going to... Man, if we're going to talk about how Alex Smith, you know, had this career year, we have to talk about how he had one as, as well. You know, I mean, Tyreek the Freak, yes, super efficient. You know, the guy was up there with Baldwin. The problem is... He doesn't have the targets. He doesn't see the targets that he needs to see in order to be successful a year after. Yeah, he's getting drafted as the 14th wide receiver of the board. That's fine value. The problem is he's usually going ahead of that. So although that ADP, that you, that average, he's usually going – I've seen him go as high as the 7th off the board or the, the 6th off the board. So a lot of people are banking on him to have the same career year like he did last year. With 100 and what he had, 101 targets or something like that. I mean, I'm not going to get up to Larry Fitzgerald yet. So we'll stay on here, even though the target count is ridiculous as far as you, in comparison. But again, Terry Kill, he's got Travis Kelsey. He's got Sammy Watkins there. Sammy Watkins is kind of a bigger, more, I don't want to say more explosive, but he's explosive in his own right. And he's there. Travis Kelsey is not going to see less balls thrown his way. And as great as we're all touting, you know, the, the quarterback to the, the go in there, he's not going to be as good as Alex Smith. Alex Smith was the third best quarterback last year. So we want to say whatever you want this year about Alex Smith. Last year, he was great. He was an MVP candidate, basically. And, uh, you know. All right, let's take it over. Larry Fitzgerald, who's kick it off. All right, Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, if we're in a PPR league and you like targets, you like 161 targets thrown your way, 150 thrown your way, 145. This is what he's done in the last three years. He's gobbled up 109 balls back in 2015. 2016, he had 107 balls uh, that he caught, and just last year he uh, matched his uh, his height of his. Uh, of catching balls, <laughs> 109 again, 1,156 yards, six touchdowns. Um, yeah, he's not going to, you know, see long passes like he did back in uh, when he first got into the league. You know, those touchdowns, you won't see him probably get double-digit touchdowns like he did in his first six years of the league, eight touchdowns, 10 touchdowns, six touchdowns, 10, 12, and 13. But what you are seeing are those yards steadily there, and what you are seeing is those receptions steadily there in – I mean, he's just the safest guy that you can use, you know, in an offense. And coming, you know, if you got, yeah, he's has a new offense he has to learn, but it, it's it's not scary <laughs> under Mike McCoy. I mean, the guy is one of the most uh, pass happy offenses. You know, like he's every offense he's he's took over or he's been involved in, it's pretty much ha pass happy. Sixty percent of uh, you know his of, of the volume of the offense is 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 usually passes you know he's gonna lean on the run a little bit but i mean fitzgerald is the safest guy there he's going to see 21 percent at least target share something that's right around what you know mike mccoy uh you know ha has his his leading receivers have you know uh he's had keenan allen you know he has he had demarius thomas as as leading receivers before so you look at a guy you know like uh who we're talking about here and it's it's very easy to see that he can repeat this it's it's not he doesn't really even need much bump of anything you know i mean you just look at his his career stats across the board and you know it's it's going to be steady the second guy has to find more work there so if you're going to point at uh maybe where the targets are going to go after david johnson you know and then then fine you know okay tar david johnson's going to see second most targets there's even room for a third guy and even the third guy you usually sees about 15 to 70 percent of the target share in a mike mccoy offense so I'm not afraid of Larry Fitzgerald at all. I mean, he's just a super safe guy in a PPR league. He's going to likely finish top 10 again. He was fourth last year. So it's... it's Okay, so it's true that the Cardinals have a, a very shaky and unproven group of wide receivers behind Fitzgerald. It's true that Sam Bradford is a conservative, accurate quarterback who can make the middle and short throws to Larry Fitzgerald. It's also true that Larry Fitzgerald is likely going to be very involved with that high target share yet again in his 15th season of his career. The... Uh, durability and the involvement isn't my concern. With a new quarterback, a new head coach, and a rookie quarterback who's likely going to be the starter if or when Sam Bradford goes down again, it's a new system for Fitzgerald. He's a constant professional, so I do believe once again he's going to be a guy who gets it done, but he's more on the safe floor side of this than the 
super high ceiling. He's got a nice high floor, but his ceiling isn't quite to where Hill's ceiling can be. He's a PPR monster, but it does take him 8 to 10 catches to get to 100 plus yards, where Hill can do that in 4. Honestly, though... Like this, this is one of those great debates. I don't right. have anything <laughs> negative to say about Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, top three all-time wide receiver. You, you can argue maybe even uh, top two after Jerry Rice. What this decision really comes down to in fantasy is that do you want to play it safe early on in your draft and take Fitz in the third round and then draft riskier players with high upside later? Or do you want to go with a guy with a very high ceiling who scores not only through the air but also on the ground and through the return game as well? <laughs> All right, guys, before we get into our final thoughts, I want to give you, uh, once again, a reminder about the four listener leagues that we're going to be running. A $25 donation gets you automatic entry into those leagues. Winners of those leagues will receive signed jerseys from pristineauction.com. Donations can be made through our website, sleeperwire.com, or through gofundme.com slash robjr. After you make that $25 donation, take a screenshot of that and email it to sleeperwire at gmail.com and include your name, preferred email address, and your sleeper username as well. All right, let's move back to final thoughts here. So taking it back to Tyreek Hill, as I was saying about Sammy Watkins, seven of his eight touchdowns came inside the 20 last year. You're going to hear people say that Watkins is going to take touchdown targets away from Hill, but Hill wasn't getting those red zone targets. He actually only had four red zone targets last season. That's fine. I know what I'm getting when I draft Tyreek Hill. I'm getting a huge, big play threat receiver, but he's not a boomer bust guy. He's not like Deshaun Jackson was for a bunch of years. He's a solid fantasy wide receiver with a super high ceiling yeah you're probably not going to get a lot of red zone touches or red zone targets or touchdowns with Tyreek Hill that's okay Sammy Watkins can have those ones Tyreek Hill is going to get the ones that are from you know 20 plus yards out that's great for fantasy and new quarterback Pat Mahomes has an absolute cannon with Kareem Hunt in the backfield Watkins across the field and Travis Kelsey also requiring focus from the defense Hill is going to be open downfield plenty of times, especially with his speed. And it's just going to be on Pat Mahomes to hit him, and Tyreek Hill certainly has a speed to catch up to almost any pass. He's a wide receiver one, being drafted as a wide receiver two. Go get him. All right. Well, uh, you mentioned how Fitzgerald probably wouldn't see the high target share, you know, and in coming into the season. See, but that's the thing about Mike McCoy's offense. He usually features a receiver that has a high target share. He had 27% last year. Uh, that was seventh highest target share in 2017. He's got little competition this year. I mean, again, you know, he's got David Johnson ahead of him. He's got, what, Chad Williams. You know, there's hype about that guy. Bryce Butler, Ricky Seals-Jones, if he's not uh, suspended. He should see retargets. He should see uh, all that. He, and they're moving him around. They're not just going to stick him, you know, in one position. They're going to move him around a lot. So it's fair to – it's. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even uh, be surprised if I see a touchdown boost in, uh, in Fitzgerald, uh, you know, uh, numbers from last year. Now, I, I mean, again, given the fact that he's the only one there, he has a pass catcher. And again, you you were talking about him. How he had ten receptions, you know, to get over a hundred yards. Yeah, but he did that like four times. <laughs> you know, so I mean, and if you're in a PPR league and he gives you a touchdown in the week three or something like that, thirty three points, almost thirty four. He does that in week six against Tampa Bay, 10, 10 receptions, 138 yards, and a touchdown, 27 points. Again, against Seattle, 10 receptions, 113 yards. I mean, that's fine. I'm completely fine with this. If I'm in a PPR league, I'm not expecting Terry Kill to see, you know, that type of efficiency again, uh, you know, unless, I don't know. I mean, he's had Demarcus uh, Robinson and, and Albert Wilson last year as, you know, as guys in his way. So, I mean, I look at, you know, this looks a lot better in a, in a Fitzgerald. I'm pretty happy having either one of these guys. But again, as we are presenting our arguments for and against, give me Fitzgerald here every time with that target share. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Sleeper Wire Great Debate. A couple final things before we go. Please check out sleeperwire.com. You can check out our weekly rankings in season. Uh, we're going to have uh, really good ones up there this year. You can find all of our shows on there. You can ask a question to the Sleeper Wire crew. You can follow us on Twitter at SleeperWire Show. I'm on there once again at CMOR SleeperWire. Hoose is on there at SleeperWire Hoose. You can find us on the Sleeper app, formerly SleeperBot, but now the Sleeper app at Professor Chris and Prophet Hoose. And Fantasy Life at Professor Chris and Hoose the Prophet. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks,